Hi guys, I'm Kelly and I do lashes here at Amara. Um, I'm at the Lehigh location. We are going to do a super full volume fill today and it's going to be amazing. Check it out. Yay. So what's the difference between classic volume and mega volume? Um, so classic lashes, we're attaching one individual extension to one natural lash. Volume, we can add multiple to a natural lash. Mega volume, we can just make them even more full. So if you want those crazy, crazy dramatic lashes, mega volume is for you. And how long does the process usually take? Um, for classic, a full set, you can expect a couple hours for volume. The average is about three hours. Um, mega volume, even longer, but they last forever and you never have to put mascara on. And we all hate mascara, so <laughs> we love it, honestly. It's also a sick, sick addiction that we love. <laughs> You going close? And should anyone, like, what do they need to do before they come to their appointment? Do they? Have um, to the main thing that I always tell my clients if you're coming with just for a fill or a full set is have clean lashes. Um, we have all the aftercare here for you, and keeping them clean will make you happy. Your lashes will look better, and it will make us happy as your artist as well. what are you doing now? Um, so right now I'm just taping her bottom lashes down so that we don't stick anything um, to her bottom lashes. I'm sure all of you have heard those horror stories of people's eyes getting glued shut. It's more of a myth than a reality, but we do want to make sure that our workspace is nice and clean and everything's out of the way. I don't know if you can see that, but there's one of our natural lashes that we're going to attach a fan to. It's nice and strong. Um, extensions don't damage your natural lashes. I know everyone says that. There we go, another myth. Um, but you can have extensions on forever and ever and ever because they just go with your natural lash cycle. So find someone good, like any of our artists here at Amara, and we'll take care of you. People can choose like different lengths and like yes that's what I love the most about volume is that it's totally customizable so I can do what your lashes can handle and also give you the look that you um, want to see She's almost prepped. We're almost ready to start applying. <laughs> and what are you looking for, Rochelle, in your eyelashes? Just volume. Um, the lashes saves me time in the mornings because I don't have to do mascara. I don't have the raccoon eyes when I wake up in the morning. So for me, it's a, an, sort of like an anti-aging purpose as well because I don't have to rub my eyes to try and get mascara off every night. Mm -hmm. So I love it. So... I love the volume as well because I naturally have short eyelashes, so it's definitely a really cool bonus for me.
Okay, we are ready to go. So lashing, people are like, oh, it's easy. It's not easy. We have to isolate one single lash and then add our extension to that. Making sure that nothing is stuck together is the most important, most important part. All of you are watching, so no pressure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a super lightweight fan, and it's just going to shed out with her natural lash. So we'll just fill her up with tons of these, and they're going to be so fluffy and beautiful. I'm honestly going to be jealous, <laughs> and so are all of you. You have pretty great lashes right now. Yeah. <laughs> I got my fill this morning, honestly. Is it pretty easy to tell between like the synthetic lashes and the natural lashes? Yeah, it is. I mean, some people have harder lashes than others. Um, there's all different types and different textures. Some people have really straight lashes. Some people have really curly lashes. And they come every color just like your regular hair does. So hers are actually really easy. Um, sometimes when people's lashes are super dark, you can't tell what's an extension and what's a natural lash, but with enough practice, you get pretty good at it. And maintaining the health is really like our main focus as lash artists. because we don't want to ruin anyone's natural lashes, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to get you fanning. Sorry, Michelle. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. So if you look, they're loose. They're all loose lashes and I'm creating the fan. So we control how many fans we put on your eyes. Um, and so it's a really, really, really custom service. Our, you know, it takes a long time to get the hang of it. I have stage fright right now because you guys are watching. There we go. <laughs> tell really bad jokes just disregard that no it's fine and what's like the usual aftercare for lashes like if someone comes out of the appointment like, um next you, 24 hours next 24 hours you just want to wash them every day um really avoid mascara and a ton of makeup um, but making sure that they're clean every day um, is 
what I ask for and what I expect from my clients. Um, so I want every client to take home a cleanser and just do it every single day. I wash my lashes in the shower every day um, and it will keep them lasting longer. It will keep them nice and fluffy and fresh and um, and really, really easy, a lot easier for us as artists to maintain them. Do you use like Borboletta lash bath? Yes, so the Borboletta products is what we use here. That's what I use. Um, I also teach for them. I'm obsessed with Borboletta products. Um, and so we have the lash bath. We just came out with the gel lash bath and it is seriously the most amazing cleanser I've ever used. So. Um, I will be making sure everyone gets it because it's so good. We also have a makeup remover, which is awesome, um, that, so that if you do wear makeup, it cleans it right off. Um, other aftercare, you want to avoid cream eyeliners. You want to avoid um, anything that's going that has oil that's going to get into your lashes, but really just keeping them clean. And brushing them daily also was a huge. Huge ones. There's myths that you can't, you know, touch them or brush them. Like that's all old, um, old ideas. Um, we want to brush them. We want to let those lashes that are shedding, we want to promote the shedding of those lashes. Um, so that the new lashes can grow in. But that's it. I mean, it's really easy. And then you never have raccoon eyes. And how often do they have to come in for a fill? Because like, it goes full set fill and then do a full set again? Yeah, so, no, so a full oh. set is you only need a full set once. And then if you maintain them, all you ever need is fills. Um, a full set, you know, takes quite a few hours. But a fill takes about an hour and a half. Um, and I recommend every two or three weeks, um, three weeks at the longest, two weeks if you're high maintenance like me, <laughs> I would get them done every week if I could, um, but two to three weeks is average. And sometimes people are like, that's a lot of time, but if you think about it, if you can take an hour out of your every three weeks, like think about how much time you spend every day putting mascara on and taking it off. That's probably an hour every day, honestly, right. getting it all off. So if you just come in every three weeks and get them, like, you always look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Right. And you it's know? more, like, cost-effective at the end of the day, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not spending any money on mascara. And honestly, I love my lashes because it makes me feel, like, awake and ready to mm -hmm. go. We all have busy schedules, so to feel like you're done, you right. open your eyes and you're like, oh, I look decent, yeah. you know? That is nice. the greatest. The greatest thing. Botox also helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you haven't gone to see Shelby, you should. She's one of our injectors here. Mm -hmm. She's responsible for my face. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty great. Are there a lot of side effects or not really? Are there like problems that someone can have? Um, you know, it's because we use um, really high quality products with Borboletta, um, our adhesives are latex free. Um, and so we really don't have a lot of problems. A few people have irritation sometimes with um, the changing of the seasons. We have a little bit more irritation. But it really is pretty rare for someone to have a major allergic reaction to any of the products. Um, so you hear about it, but it really is pretty rare. I've seen it maybe two or three times in my really long career. How long have you been doing the lashes for now? I've been doing lashes for almost nine years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm 
it's a pretty tedious process for you, but not really for the guest, right? The guest is just kind of... No, I, it's just, we, we call them lash naps. You just come in and you get to relax. Um, nothing should hurt in the process. Putting on these gel pads is really the only thing that's uncomfortable. And the rest of the time you can just relax. And it's, I don't find it super tedious. I actually find it super relaxing. So I love, I could sit here and lash all day. Probably why you've been doing it for nine I know, months. yeah. That's true. How many people do we have watching? Um, five on Facebook and three. Oh, oh four. Oh, wow. Instagram. What a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all of you that are watching, what questions do you have? Don't all ask at once. Oh, I haven't gotten any questions yet. Kelly, why are you so fun? Why are your jokes so good? Born this way, baby. Born this way. <laughs> and what got you interested in doing lashes? Oh man, so I went to beauty school and I did hair for a long time. I love hair. Um, and one of my friends, she um, started, she learned how to do lashes and started doing everyone's lashes in the salon that I worked at. And she was like, who's going to do my lashes? So um, I went and took a class and I hated it. <laughs> but stuck with it and um, a few years ago um, I found an opportunity with Borboletta and they are so amazing and have been growing like crazy and so um, I just ended up leaving hair behind. Um, I'm using on her um, our 0.05 lashes. Um, they're going to make it super, super fluffy and a little bit more full. Um, she has great lashes, but not a ton, and I want to make sure that I can really give her the fullness that she wants. And are there like different techniques that each lash artist has, or is it pretty universal? Um, the, ide the ideal fan is the same. There's a few different ways that we can make them. Um, so I'm using the pinching method. So I'm using my fingers to create my fan. Um, but at Borboletta, we teach a lot of different ways. We teach um, four different methods, and then we let this artist choose what works best um, for them because we want isolation to be um, a focus and just being able to ma make those fans. And sometimes we have lash casualties. <laughs> so sad. 
Oh, Dr. Cat says, is it good or bad to use Latisse when you have your lashes done? Um, so Latisse is amazing because it's going to help promote your growth of your lashes. Um, the only downside to doing it with lash extensions is that your growth cycle is going to go a lot faster. So you're going to need fills more often. Um, so you would probably be a two week client rather than a three just because they're going to grow so fast and they're going to cycle out a lot faster. So that's, um, usually the only reason why I would maybe be hesitant to use Latisse while using eyelash extensions. Um, but it is definitely going to make my workspace a lot easier because you're going to have longer, thicker lashes to, for me to work with. That was a good question. Chill. Super chilled. She wasn't falling asleep. <laughs> no, I love listening to all the questions and answers and stuff. That's cool. But yeah, it's like it's super relaxing because I'm literally just lying here. And Katie's like doing it. all the work. <laughs> Are there any skincare products that, like, if you like, for example, like a cleanser or something that you shouldn't be using, or like? Um, you just want to make sure you don't get oil on your eyes, um, so, or on your lids. Um, so anyone that is using anything oily or with an oil-based product, um, I just recommend that they keep it away from their eyes. So, I use a lot of the Skin Medica products, and I don't have any issues with any of those because I use the Borboletta cleanser for my lashes. So I wash my face first and then I do my lashes last and they're great mm -hmm. and intact. And if someone wants to wear like eyeliner, mm -hmm. um, would you just say like, not just like an oil-free eyeliner? Or you wanna go oil-free? Um, the really, the one that we're gonna say no to is the cream um, because it just gets caked on and it's really hard to get off. Um, so if you're going to use liner, a liquid is a great option, um, or just a pencil or getting your shadow wet and doing it that way. Um, or just tell your lash artist that you want your lashes thicker so that that lash line looks darker and then you won't need it. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to expose all of her lashes. Um, what you may not know about natural lashes is that you have lots of different layers. So we want to find all the lashes. Um, as full as we can get them is what we want. So we're going to go for everything. So what I'm doing is grabbing the tips of her extensions. I'm exposing those layers. She only has a few. <laughs> but you can see those little guys. They're so little, I don't know how you see them. I know. <laughs> Dr. Ken has another question. Okay. Says, what are the worst sins you can commit uh, if you have lashes? Picking, putting makeup on them? Picking at them, yes, but mascara. We tell you no, and if you do it, 
going to judge you harshly. <laughs> um, it just makes it so much harder um, to keep your lashes looking amazing um, and rushing your artist. I would say that's another one is expecting your lashes to look super full and amazing and wonderful in 45 minutes. It's never going to happen. Um, so I always tell my clients, we're starting a relationship. We've got to figure out how each other works. And you have expectations for me as your artist to make you look amazing. And I also have expectations of you as my client to maintain them and make it um, the easiest for me to give you what you want. So no mascara. <laughs> <laughs> and then Taylor.m asks, how often do you use a nano mister through the service? Um, Taylor.m, is that a T-A-E? Mm -hmm. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> um, well, my nanomister is not here, but I like to use a nanomister throughout the service um, because um, what it does is it accelerates the cure of the adhesive. So it also feels really good on the client's eyes um, and just makes the um, a service a lot easier. If I have a client that, that's eyes water a lot, then I will use the Nano Mister more, but it's really only necessary at the end. So preference, I like to use it throughout. Some people like to use it only at the end, but it is a must if you have some with watery eyes. And do you um, recommend that your clients get Nano Misters as well, or not really? You know, it's not necessary. It doesn't really do anything for them. Once they have left, it feels really nice, so, you know, go for it. My <laughs> kids want them for Christmas, so <laughs> if your children want them, they're a great toy that will distract them for 20 minutes. Um, but no, not necessary for the client. And when are you available at Amara? So right now I am at the Lehi Lehigh location um, on Thursdays from 9 to 8, so all day and all night, um, and Saturdays from 9 to 6. Um, after the new year, I'll be taking, um, adding a few more days to my schedule, but for now, that's when I'm there. I still have openings next week. I'm booked for Christmas, but if you want to get looking amazing for New Year's, come see me. Was that a convincing pitch or no? To me it was. Okay. I mean, just watching you work, though, is also a convincing <laughs> pitch, so. Um, Kelly Adam asks, what's the best way to dry your lashes? Okay, so the best way, I'll show you, and then I'll sanitize my hands. Um, so when I am drying my lashes, I take a clean towel or like a paper towel or something and you're just gonna press on them like that um, and that way you're not pulling them or like rubbing a towel through them you just are squeezing out the water and then I wait until I put my makeup on or whatever for the day and then I brush them out after because you want to brush them out once they're dry because that will fluff them right back up so super simple you don't have to get too crazy but really really easy Um, Dr. Cat says, how can I tell good lashes from bad lashes? Um, I think the looking at them, um, the idea of lashes is to enhance your beauty. Just like your hair is meant to enhance your beauty, um, any services that you get are meant to enhance. So 
I feel like you can tell when you see a bad set of lashes because you're like, whoa, where are those lashes going with that face? You know, mm -hmm. um, you can kind of tell. Um, but as a client, you can tell that you have good lashes versus bad lashes based on feel. Um, we don't want anything stuck together. And so you shouldn't feel anything. Nothing in your service should hurt. And when you leave, your lashes shouldn't hurt. So if you feel like you have pain or anything hurting, chances are that your natural lashes are all stuck together. And as they grow out, they're pulling out natural lashes. Mm -hmm. So um, any good lash artist on occasion, they may get one stuck together here and there. Um, and it's a super easy fix for us just to unstick it if you're like, there's something hurting on this side. Um, but if everything is really painful, chances are everything is stuck together. Right. Yeah. Well, and if you can't see in them and all, that's awesome. Yeah. And then Bright Eyed Lash asks, how do you unstick the couple of lashes I, um, that get stuck on the bottom lashes? I try so hard, but there's always a couple. Okay, well, let's, I'll show you that right now. Let's peel this up. <laughs> so I always check for stickies when I'm done. It's just part of the process because I know every time I get cocky there's always one there but I don't want my client to open their eyes and then you know have your tweezers come coming at them with their eye open it makes them panic it makes me panic it doesn't you don't want that to be their last um memory of you coming at them with a <laughs> sharp object um so what I do is I always will just lift with my tweezer and make sure that nothing is sticking. If one is coming across, you can always tell if a, an extension is like pulling, you can tell if it's stuck. So I'll just lift and use the edge of my tweezer right here and just kind of untangle it. So I'll always check and always do that when their eyes are closed before they open and really just look and make sure that nothing is sticking and do it all before they open their eyes. Because right now she's in this super relaxed state and so she doesn't really know what I'm doing and if I'm unsticking, she's not really fully aware. Where if her eyes are open and she knows that something is stuck, then we all just go into panic mode and then her eyes are watering and it's just, that's not how we want to end our appointment. So that's it. I hope that answers that question. Yeah, you have to get used to using your non-dominant hand and you have to be able to see, so, and you have to be patient too. Um, also for clients, just throwing it out there, if you aren't cleaning your lashes and you're not doing the things that we ask you, we can tell as your artist because we can see any sort of buildup in um, your lash line. So any makeup residue, any shadow, anything like that, we can see. Um, so just always be honest with us because we can tell. And we can also help too. So if you're like, I have shadow in my lashes, I don't like what it does to them over the week, then we can make sure that you go home with the right products to keep your lashes looking their best. And then Kelly Adam had another question. She said, what are some must-haves for getting started? I got some Borboletta lashes and Nano Mister, but I'm looking for tweezers suggestions. 
Oh man. Um, I have a few favorite tweezers from Borboletta. Um, I like a more straight tweezer. Um, I'm using the 122 um, right now from Borboletta, but I love the 155. It's probably my favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, and then you want a nice boot tweezer. Um, again, these are from Borboletta. Um, the volume tweezer is amazing. Um, I only use Borboletta tweezers because I love how many options that we have. Tweezers are hard because it's all based on feel, so you really have to find what works for you. I guarantee if you ask every artist that we have here at Amara, we all use different um, options and versions of Borboletta's tweezers. So that's why there's so many, so try them out. Um, order a few, decide what you like. I have probably 50 pairs of tweezers and I have like four that I love. So you can never, you'll never stop buying tweezers. <laughs> I know, it's so bad. It's okay, nine years, it's a long time. I know. Um, is anyone else sad about Christmas music going away? Because I am. I love Christmas music. That's awesome. I feel like this Christmas didn't feel like a Christmas. No, because it didn't snow until what, yesterday? Mm -hmm. Callie Adams said, okay, you convinced me. <laughs> Oh, someone said your nails are fire. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if I didn't do lashes, I'd probably go into nails because I love nails. I mean, I only do my own sometimes, but. <laughs> Should get them done here. My next appointment is with Megan oh, at the Lehigh right. location. She's amazing. She's amazing. And I've been trying to get on her books. She's pretty booked. She is pretty booked, but she's awesome, so. Mm -hmm. Well deserved. Yeah. Yeah, Amara really is like this one-stop shop. Like, I have to close my eyes when I'm in the boutique. <laughs> because I buy stuff, stuff every time. <laughs> I'm like, is it just me closing my eyes walking through, or does everyone else do that too? <laughs> I got a great question, but I don't know. It says, what are your fill prices? That's a great question. Um, that is a great question. So, um, my volume fills are 80, um, and that's for an hour and a half. And if you want mega volume, because it takes longer, those fills are 120. Um, and classic, which if you want classic for me, I will try to convince you to do volume. Um, but my classic fills are 65. But our price ranges all vary, but you know, between artists. So we have a good range. <laughs> I 
have so many lashes. Let's see, what other questions? I mean, do we need to go through the list of holiday necessities? Like a spray tan and your lashes and your brows. I just got my brows waxed. I'm obsessed with them. Who did your brows? Um, Chanel at the Lehigh location. We had a quick minute and I was like, please do it so fast. <laughs> um, Kelly Adam says, why do you prefer volume over classic? Um, I prefer volume over classic because the weight is lighter, um, so they're better for the natural lashes. Um, and I feel like it gives me more options as an artist. So volume doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have crazy, crazy lashes. You can go super natural with volume as well. Um, so I love it for like my mature clients who have no natural lashes um, because it's lighter and we can still give them something really, really soft, but I can go more custom with volume than I can with classic. And as a client, classic, I would always pick at them because I could feel them, where volume you can't feel, so it's just a little bit better for that too. Said, thanks for being so super helpful. You're welcome. Oh, okay. So we have, um, I think you already addressed this question, but we'll ask, uh, we'll do it again. Stamped said, people say lash extensions ruin your natural lashes. What do you have to say about that? <sighs> what do I have to say about that? I mean, yeah, they can ruin your natural lashes, but you can also get your hair ruined by bleach, you can also get, you know, your skin ruined by an esthetician. You can, it just matters on who you go to. But I think one of the main things that I have to say about natural, your natural lashes being ruined is it's like when a lot of times people take their extensions off and be like, I'm bald, I have no lashes. When their natural lashes are actually healthier than they were before. It's just like if you put hair extensions in and you take them out, you're gonna be like, I have no hair. Um, where you actually do, you just don't have as much because of your extension. So it's kind of the same concept. Like, of course you're gonna feel like you are naked and have nothing if you take your extensions off because you have these perfect black, thick extensions on. Um, so yes, like if I'm using the wrong thing, if I'm going too heavy on your lashes, I can absolutely ruin them. But that's why you just need to, A, do your research on who you're going to, Make sure that they are putting the health of your lashes first, um, and then your lashes will be intact. I think the last time I took my extensions off was like four years ago, and I am doing just fine, and I still have lashes. Um, so I don't think it's as common as people say, um, so it's kind, of, it's kind of one of those things that's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. Well, and like you said, they fall out with the natural cycle. Yeah, yeah, so as long as I'm doing it right, you'll never have, have an issue. And I think too, like the lash industry has changed so much. So like I have a lot of clients that they're like, oh, I got them like five years ago. And I always tell them, try it again because it's so different than it was five years ago. Um, the quality of product has changed. Um, the quality of education has changed. The methods have changed. Like everything has changed. 
Um, so if you're doing lashes five years ago and haven't updated your education or if you got them five years ago and want to try them again, I would say do it because it's going to be such a different experience um, than what you had before. Do you usually do both eyes at the same time, or do you do one and then the other? I always bounce back and forth, um, partially because I'm paranoid, um, but you never know what could happen. Um, sometimes people have different amounts of lashes on each eye. What if, you know, she has an emergency and has to go right now? Um, it just makes everything nice and more even if we bounce back and forth. Um, I feel like if you do one eye, things tend to stick more also. So just for a lot of reasons, I always, always bounce back and forth. Oh yeah, you can see all those natural lashes popping out. Um, how about a tip? If you want your lashes done faster, tell your artist not to talk to you. Or don't talk to your artist. <laughs> um, we timed it one time and you can get a lot, got, get done a lot quicker if you don't talk about it, about anything. <laughs> so if you're in a hurry, close your eyes and relax and let them get, get it done. Don't have a Facebook Live during the lash. Don't have a Facebook Live during the lash appointment. I mean, it's fine. I'm like not, I don't know what kind of weird faces I make when I lash, so I probably should. Well, maybe now you'll find out. Now I'll find out. <laughs> What's my concentration face, you know? Starting to get like computer neck. <laughs> You said you'd give volume to like your more seasoned clients or your more like your more mature audience yeah. clients. Um, who would you recommend like mega lashes for? 
Um, anyone that feels like they want drama, um, that's who we can give it to. Because there's so much lighter, we can do so much more. Um, me, I don't, if I didn't have to, like, on a normal day, I don't wear any makeup other than my lashes. So I want my lashes to be the star of the show, you know? Um, so I love Mega. They don't always have to look so scary. Like, some people think of the scariest lashes they can think of. That's not necessarily Mega volume. Um, but if you feel like your lashes aren't as full as you want them and they just can't get as full as you want them, Mega Volume is a great option. I do it a lot on, I have a lot of clients with really sparse lashes, so not as many. Um, so a lot of those clients I do Mega Volume on because their lashes just can't, they just don't have enough to get what they want. And like you said, it's super customizable. Yeah, absolutely. And then, okay, oh gosh, Juju PMCC said, how do you break it to the clients with zero lashes and that their time between fills is going to be less? Um, I feel like you just have to be up front. Um, like I said earlier, like it's a relationship, right? Um, and some people just have to come in more often. So... Um, all my clients are two or three weeks and that's it. Like I don't, and we don't have any problems with that because I'm telling them why. As long as they don't feel like you're just telling them that because you want more money, um, they're usually fine. So this is what your lash growth looks like. These are what your natural lashes are. This is what you can handle. You're doing everything I'm asking, but you need to come in every two weeks. And um, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, and you can explain to them too, like if you come in three weeks, this is how long a three week fill is and I'm not going to be able to get them as full as you want them. So if you want me to give you what you want, this is how often you have to come in. And they're usually good with that. And if not, maybe you're not the right artist for them. And you can tell them that too. I know you talked about your um, fill prices. What are your full set? Um, my volume full sets are 200. Um, my volume, f my mega volume full sets are 250, I think. And a classic full set is 150. Still doing good where she be? Mm-hmm. Katie is super gentle. Like she's saying, it's not painful at all. Literally just relaxing.
I'm just going to change out my adhesive, but I'm going to move this one over here. Where did I put it? I'm going to let gravity pull it out. the nozzle, put it back. Um, I'm using Borboletta's number five adhesive. Um, it has great retention, so your lashes will always hold so well. Is that your favorite glue, would you say? Yeah, I really, really like it. Do you use any other glue, or do you just... Um, sometimes I use the Ultimate from Borboletta, um, but the number five has always been really, really amazing for me. Um, I love that Amara uses Borboletta products because when I found Borboletta years ago, um, I had tried everything, and all my clients' eyes were always red, and I just had a lot of issues with adhesive, and... Um, They've done so much research to get their adhesive what it is. It's been really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the Borboletta number five? Borboletta number five, yeah. Got so many lashes. We're gonna be here all night. See, we're making progress. They're starting to fill up a little bit. For someone who has like blonde um, eyelashes, do they usually show through or not really? No, not really. Um, I think as long as the artist is getting every single lash, they don't usually, blondes don't usually have an issue. You do have a lot of lashes where it should be. It's news to me. <laughs> I don't see them. Being blonde, I always think they don't exist. So I tint my brows to change my life. Well, it's funny how the, we do all these high maintenance things so that we can be low maintenance. <laughs> exactly. Um, there was another question by Callie Adam. She said, do you ever tint before you lash? No, never. You can, but you want to make sure that you wait a good enough amount of time before you lash on them because sometimes, um, with tint, you're affecting 
the lashes and the pH levels and all of that. So, and the porosity of them. Um, so I've had some issues with people tinting their lashes before. Um, but my clients have never had a problem because I just get all their lashes and then they don't feel like they need to have them tinted. Um, she says, how long would you suggest to wait? Um, I'm not sure the exact time, but I think it's like 24 to 48 hours or something. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I maybe just made that up, but I'm pretty sure that's it. So many Do you have to get every single lash or do you kind of pick and choose? You don't have to, but it's just better if you do. Things will retain better if you do. Mm -hmm. So if you get a, you know, a newer lash artist, they may not, you know, they may get you 85% full and you as a client, you're not really going to know. Um, but I shoot for every single lash and that's the goal of every artist. Because there's nothing better for me than when my clients come in and say, I, it's my fill, but I didn't feel like I needed one. Um, and that's what I want them all to, to feel like.
Bless you. Thank you. I was trying really hard not to. We're almost ready for her inner corners, and then we'll be. You're starting to look good. All right, so we just have to do the inner corners and then she'll be all done. Um, I think that's how, another way you can tell if you have a good lash artist or not is if your inner corners get done. Um, you should have all those little baby guys. Like this whole chunk right here is all natural. Our shortest length is seven. Those inner corners. They're so tiny. Is the fanning harder because they're so tiny? Or uh, really? e heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hardest part of lashing is getting those inner corners. But it is also the most fulfilling because it makes your lashes look so much better when you've got everything done.
think we can see the end from the end of him. <laughs> the end is in sight. I was going to end the Facebook Live at 3.30, but that was so close. <laughs> what time is it? It's 3.30. Okay. You still have one faithful fan. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kelly Adam asked, "What curl are they? Are lid lashes you're using?" Um, these are D curl. Um, what is your most popular curl used? I use a lot of CC and a lot of D. So probably a good mix between those two.
little section. Okay, so now I'm actually going to check for any stickies and make sure it didn't stick anything. And we are good. So normally this is where I would um, nano mist her, but I don't have my nano mist her, so we're just going to fan push away all the fumes so that when she opens she's not feeling like she has any um, anything irritating her eyes. Okay, I'm gonna have you keep them closed for me. <coughs> I'm gonna give her a good brush one more time. Make sure we feel good about that shape. Okay, go ahead and open. Make sure it didn't stick you anywhere. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Well, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all tuning in. Let this him. Episode of... Oh, no. Thanks to me. Send it with <laughs> for this episode of Lashing Adamara. Perfect.